God creates the water and we dig wells. The enemy seeks to stop the wells by covering it with dirt. The wells become dry and the dry wells become prisons. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. The world we live in is dying out of thirst. The church is the well where rivers of living water flow to bring life to people, breakthrough to finances, peace to families, healing to physical bodies and freedom to souls. Join us as we go digging. I'm gonna preach today about digging wells part six and we're gonna read the story of Samuel I'm gonna pick and pick and choose few verses to read from but the story of King uh, excuse me prophet Samuel began with his mother who had a passionate prayer life and it contrasted Samuel with the sons of Eli whose dad was very passive toward God very old and very passive very cold toward God and from the beginning when I look at story of Samuel I see that Samuel's passion for God was birthed in his mother's prayer closet and the sons of Eli's corrupt life resulted in their father's cold attitude toward God. Cold parents produce corrupt children. Praying parents produce prophetic children. We all know Moses but if you read Hebrews 11, Bible is very clear that Moses' calling did not start with Moses, it started with his parents. It first highlights the faith of Moses' parents as the ground for Moses' calling. Parents never underestimate your commitment, your faithfulness to God. That even if you will not go to great places, you create a platform for your children to be used by God. That's why Paul said to Timothy, he says, the faith that is in you, he says, it didn't originate in you. It was in your mama. In fact, it started with your grandma. And the reason why you are Timothy today is because of somebody laid a foundation. If you are paying a price and not seeing results, that means someone else will reap the benefit. But if you are, did not pay the price and reaping results, that means somebody else paid the price and never saw the fruit. And you are reaping that fruit. That reminds us, those of us in here today who are parents, your children will carry your spiritual passions. What you do in moderation, they will do in excess. That's why if you do social drinking, don't be surprised if they will take a notch higher. That's why if you gamble, if you watch pornography, if you engage in illicit and immorality and things that are compromising your consciousness and grieve the Holy Spirit, you're not only hurting your future, you are giving a next generation a bad example. Eli did not know that his cold attitude toward God produced a corrupt generation that God eventually removed. God wants us as parents, mentors and guardians to give a next generation the highest possible platform because if they have a good example they have a good start they have a head start but if they have a bad example they still are without excuse parents excuse me children if you have good parents you have a head start in life if you have parents who are not divorced if you have parents that are praying if you have parents that are saved if you have parents that remind you to live pure and holy in this generation you have a head start in life now you have a chance to run with that head start or play dumb and stand there and when the gun goes off just stand there. You still have a choice but you already have an advantage. Now for those of you who say Vlad but my parents are not necessarily didn't give me a good example. You still don't have an excuse. Bill Gates said if you were born poor that's not your fault. If you die poor it is your fault. Because your parents they determined your history. Your mentors, they determine your destiny. No matter where you came from, choices are stronger than statistics. Amen. Who you surround yourself with, which experiences you choose to be engaged in, they will trump anything you came from. And how I know that? Because Samuel, though his mom gave him a good heritage of faith, Samuel took a notch higher. He was a prophet. He was a man of God. Yet his kids 
contrary to his example chose to take bribes and live corrupt life which tells me you can have a bad example and still choose to do what's right or you can have a good example and still choose to do what's wrong we all have our choices do not blame your parents for the disadvantage that maybe you're experiencing right now it's how you were born but it's not how you have to die it's how you started it's not how you're gonna finish why because you will make a choice that me and my house will serve God what they did was their choice what I will do is mine and I am responsible and it is my decision and I stand by that decision somebody give God some praise right now you have the power the ball is in your hand right now it's in your court you make a decision stop playing up a victim stop blaming take responsibility yes you didn't have a head start but you still don't have an excuse I see that in Samuel he has something was passed on to him his mom already helped him by having that praying life it's already in his DNA it's in his blood to pursue God but he still makes a choice I want to highlight three truths from Samuel's life that I believe will help us to be people who will dig wells people who will not only experience God but experience abundant life if you have a Bible I'm going to only read one verse and that's going to be 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1 now boy Samuel historians and theologians believe that at this time he's 12 years of age boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was rare in those days and no widespread revelation and I'm going to pause on that and explain just a little bit more in just a moment I want you to notice this Samuel has a miraculous birth he wasn't supposed to be born because his mom was barren miraculous supernatural beginning in his life I believe you're like Samuel too because when you got born again you also had a miraculous birth you were born second time supernaturally spiritually you had a bad heart God gave you a new heart you had a bad nature God gave you and me a new nature and a new name can somebody say amen that's why people who say you know I was born bad get born again some people say and one time person came to me and said I was born gay I said Jesus says to be born again I said I was born a sinner Jesus tells me to be born again too all of us were born bad the first time that's why we have a second chance to be born again and the second birth is miraculous birth he gets born again and Samuel doesn't get born again he gets born first time supernaturally his mama puts him into the temple now there's only one problem is the temple she puts him into was worse than the house she could have kept him in think about it the temple that she put him into was so messed up it was the place you don't want your kids to be in it was supposed to be a good place but it was so corrupt the Bible says the sons of Eli lived sexually immoral life they did not know God meaning they had no appetite for God and thirdly they despised sacrifices they broke their priestly duties meaning temple was the worst place you want to send your kid to and Samuel did not have a good example he did not have an older brother Samuel did not have a great mentor Samuel had only mom and dad visit him once a year to bring him brand new clothes but I want you to watch this being in a corrupted, toxic, horrible environment. Samuel did not blend in. Samuel did not get corrupted. He was a boy. He was a little child. But he did not become what temple was. The temple system, the year after year toxic environment did not change this boy's convictions and commitment to God. And he was alone he had no support system there was no home group unlike Daniel who had three other bodies he had nobody with him there he was by himself and one day Daniel excuse me Samuel he changed the temple system one day all of those guys were gone and the system changed in the temple I want to remind every person here today before God will use you to change your environment God will test you whether your environment will change you before you will go to change your world you will be tested not to be changed by the world you are in right now the toxic family situation the difficult time at work 
perhaps it's in your college school right now where everybody is doing something where the norm is something that is against your convictions where the, it's popular to do what is against the word of God where there is a pressure in the culture to conform to the culture but my bible makes me to understand is that before God can transform a man a man makes a decision not to conform to his surroundings God cannot transform. God cannot use you to transform your environment until he first tests you that you don't get conformed to your surroundings. And that's why many of us are saying I'm gonna change the world. How? If you watch what they watch, listen what they listen, go to where they go, smoke what they smoke, drink what they drink, sleep like they sleep. How? What are you gonna change if you're just like them? How are you going to stand out if you're so busy fitting in? If your whole goal is to be accepted by the popular crowd. The Bible says the flower fades and the grass withers. Meaning trends, they change. Fades, those things that are popular today, they're no longer popular in five years. But the word of our God endures forever. Meaning when you decide like Daniel in the Babylonian culture, I cannot change Babylon, but I will be refused to be changed by the Babylon. I will not eat what they eat. I will not watch what they watch. I will not live like they live. I will stand out. I will stand for God. I will stand for my faith. I will stand for my purity. I will stand for my conviction. I will stand for the truth. Guess what happens? When you stand up for God, God stands up for you. Guess who God used to change Babylon? The one who wasn't changed by Babylon. Guess who God used to change the temple? The one who wasn't corrupted by the temple. Before God lets you change your world, He will test you whether your world will change you. Titanic did not reach its destination because the water the Titanic was on got inside. If the world you are around gets inside of you, you will not change your world because you become a byproduct of your world. You will become a salt that lost its flavor and the Bible says it's useless and nobody needs it and they trample on the ground. When you lose your distinction, when you lose your separation from the world as a Christian, you're useless to the world. The world doesn't need you. The world doesn't care about you because you're like it. You, you hurt the same, you bleed the same, you can't offer a solution if you're in the same hole with them. That's why Bible says be separate. It doesn't mean that we run away from the world. It means that we are in the temple but the temple world is not in us. That means we see the corruption, we see the hypocrisy, we see the popularity of the ungodly things being popular, we see the trends, we see all of that stuff and we love people but we say you know what I am not here to blend in because this will pass. It used to be popular to kill people for sport and that passed and this will pass. Killing babies in the womb that will pass too. Why? Because God's word will endure forever. Making fun of God that will pass too. You should ask Stalin. You should ask other dictators who made fun of God. Where did they end up? That will pass and you will stand your ground. God will use a man to change the world. Who makes a decision not to be changed by the world. And Samuel, the first victory Samuel had is not to become the friends and influenced by the sons of Eli. When he had no friends. And it's hard to do when you're alone. It's hard to do when you don't have a clique to support you, when you don't have a squad to uphold you. It's hard to do when you don't have a, a group. It's hard to do when you don't have support. But it's still possible. If a boy could do it, so can you. With home groups, with podcasts, with Bible reading plans, with books, so can you. With Sunday morning sermons, so can you. With your parents cheering you on, so can you. With your pastor preaching to you, so can you. With prayers and fasting. If boy can do it, you and I can do it. Can somebody say amen? I know that not, not conforming to the culture will cost you something. This is the biggest problem. Is that you lose something if you refuse to conform to the culture. But watch this. If you do conform, you lose everything. If you don't conform, you lose something. If you do conform, you lose everything. Samuel lost his childhood. He didn't spend it with kids.
You know what he played with? Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> How was your childhood? Well, I memorized every closet in the temple. How was your childhood? I learned about showbread and the candlelight sticks. How was your childhood? Oh, I read book of Leviticus. He had no childhood. He lost his childhood. But he had his destiny. Sons of Eli had a fun life which was cut short and they not only disappointed God. The Bible says I think the only instance in the scripture where I could remember where God spoke of his people that he wanted to kill him and that was the sons of Eli. You will lose either everything or something. You just decide what you want to lose. You will pay now and play later or you will play now and pay later but you will pay. You will either live with the pain of discipline or with the pain of regret but there will be a pain and the best pain is the one you can control. The best pain is the one you can choose not the one that's inflicted on you. The best pain is when you hold your horses, when you hold your purity. The best pain is when you control yourself. The best pain is when you hold your virginity. The other pain is when HIV hits you. And that you can't stop. The other pain is when you go from broken relationship to a broken relationship and that you can't control and that doesn't stop and that keeps hurting you and hurting you. The best pain is the one you control and choose and that's the pain of picking up the cross, following Christ, denying yourself and following him where he goes. Can somebody say amen? I know some of you came here today and you're, you were hoping I'm gonna pat you on the back. Before we get to that part we need to remind you Many of us are, have come too many times to the cross but God is calling you to get on it and die on that cross. To your interest, to your desires, be separated because God cannot bless a mess. God can only bless someone. God can only use someone who will be separated to him in this day and in this hour. And Samuel first, he was pure from the pollution of his surrounding. He was separated from his surrounding. He didn't change it. He refused to be changed by it and then God gave him the authority to clean up the temple. God will give you the authority to change that toxic environment. Your family will be different. Your business will be different. The way you will rule and reign in your that environment in the future will be different. Why? Because you were not corrupted in your testing period. The second thing I want us to notice is not only Samuel refused to become like them but the verse we read it says Samuel ministered to the Lord. So not only Samuel refused to be like them but Samuel ministered to the Lord. But if you read a little bit earlier in chapter 2 of verse 26 it says the child grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and with men. Somebody say growth and somebody say favor. So as Samuel is separating himself from the toxic environment of the temple without running from the temple God already is granting him two things. Growth and what's the second one? Favor. But I want you to see that in spite of growth and in spite of favor, Samuel in chapter 3 verse 1, it says Samuel ministered to the Lord. A. Don't settle in success that your separation has invited. When you begin to separate yourself from the world, it attracts God's favor. For some weird reason, you don't eat the food of the Babylon and you're 10 times smarter than the rest of the guys. For some weird reason, growth begins to follow your life. For some weird reason, your grades get better. For some weird reason, while the rest of the people are trying to deal with their abusive boyfriends, you're finishing your master's degree. For some weird reason, while everybody is trying to prove everybody wrong and you already got your own house. For some weird reason, God's favor and God's growth begins to mark people's lives who don't try to please the world and be friends with the world but be separate to God. I can't explain it but maybe it says in Matthew 6 33, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. But there is a blessing that is going to follow you. That is favor that is going to follow you. That is God's grace that is going to follow your life. That is a mark of God that's going to last on your education, on your business, on your family when you follow God. Somebody give God some praise right now. If you want that blessing, give God some praise right now. The challenge remains of course is when the blessing comes because of our separation. When we become settled in that blessing instead of ministering to the Lord in spite of the blessing. See in the first point Samuel was distracted by other people who were supposed to do good but were bad. But the second thing 
is when the good things that follow your life become your own distraction. There was a boxing yesterday. I went to get a haircut and I was watching um, a, a guy, Andy, who was boxing Anthony. And uh, in June 1st of this year, Andy fought Anthony, who is the heavy champion of the world, who beat Vladimir Klitschko and they became friends after that. And so this guy, he's a Mexican boxer and he challenged a worldwide champion in New York on June 1st and knocked him out. Knocked him out. And so of course he became very, very confident in himself and they scheduled a rematch which was yesterday. So I'm getting my haircut done and the guys kind of updated me, told me the whole story. And so I got very interested, you know, guys beating each other. I mean, what, what could be better than that? And so as I'm watching, and of course the, my Mexican friend, he, he got kicked out of school because of fighting. So now that became his career. And you can see the way his fighting skills is like street fighting. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. And so, and the, and the guy from London, you know, he's, he's, he's a pro. He, he, knows, he, he knows how to dance in that thing. He knows how to, how to, how to box. And of course, the, the guy from London who lost the, the championship won yesterday again. And I watched the interview yesterday of the Mexican champion. And he said this, he says, three months of party cost me this fight. He says, I gained so much pounds and I, I loved his honesty because most people are not going to be there like, oh, referees are the ones, the judges are the ones. He was very, very honest. He says, you know what? I took my victory so seriously that I thought I was invincible. I did not know I had another fight. And he says, I gained so much weight. I partied so much. He says, I came to this ring unprepared. The other guy took his defeat and went to the gym like there was nobody's, nobody's business. And he came hungry and they asked him, they said, what is your secret? He says, no matter whether I am a champion or a loser, two things I never lose, my hunger and my humility. And I just want to remind you, if God graces your life with growth, don't lose your hunger. If God graces your life with favor, don't lose your humility. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Why? Because God wants to make you a prophet to the nations. He doesn't just want to give you favor. He wants to give you nations. He wants to give you a new thing. He wants to give you what He promised to you. But if you lose your hunger and if you lose your humility, you will get stuck at one level. You will settle at one success level. Touch your neighbor and say, stay hungry, my friend. Touch your other neighbor and say, stay humble. Don't settle in the success separation has invited. The favor you have on your life is not final. It's never meant to be final. The growth you've experienced right now, it's not meant to be your destination. The miracle of seeing Pharaoh drown and ten plagues is not what God promised to Abraham. He promised land that flowed with milk and honey. What we see today is not what God has promised. This is just a step. When Joseph experienced favor of the Potiphar, it was not what he saw in the dream as a kid. What he saw in the dream was the stars. What he saw in the dreams was the nations. He's experiencing a little favor and a little growth. But Joseph refuses to give in. Joseph refuses to lose his purity and his passion. Just because he experienced a little bit of that. He says, I will stay humble. I will stay hungry. I will minister to God. Whether he blesses me or not because my God, my God, my God, my God will supply all of my needs according to His riches and His glory. My God, He will do more than I imagine, more than I think, more than I pray and more than He promised. Somebody give God some praise. If you have a dream, if you have a calling, if you have a promise, if you have a prophecy, give God some praise right now. Stay hungry and stay humble. Samuel, the Bible says he ministers to the Lord. Can I highlight one more thing? Stay fascinated with God even after you're familiar with the things of God. Even after you know every corner in the temple. Even if after you know the whole procedure of how the services go. Samuel already knew about the candlelights. He already knew about the tabernacle articles. He already knew about everything in the temple. But little boy is ministering to God. Because I yes, I am familiar with the temple. 
but I am interested in God. I am fascinated in who He is. I am a little kid in a candy store. I am curious about His character. I am curious in His glory. See Moses saw the power. He saw the palace. He saw the miracles but he gets lost in the glory of God. He says, God show me your face. But Moses you already hear God. Moses, you already have seen more and most men will only dream of. But see, you don't lose your fascination with the person of God just because you got accustomed to the things of God. Dear leaders in our church, dear pastors, dear directors, dear people who know how the things go, who know when somebody crossed the line on the stage, who know when some, somebody said something they should have not said, when the camera is not pointing in the right direction, when the right microphone is not on, when you know the flow of the service, please understand you don't have God figured out. God is not in the things. God is above the creation and a little boy understood I know the temple but I'm hungry for him. I want to know him. I will minister to God. I will minister to God. Stay fascinated with God even when you're familiar with ministry, even when you're familiar with miracles, even if you're familiar with how everything's supposed to go. That's why when Jesus got baptized in water and the Bible says a dove like a dove came Holy Spirit upon him. The heavens split and the voice came and two disciples they were moved. They came to Jesus. They said, Jesus, we're curious. Where do you live, Master? Everybody else watched it and went back home. But someone had a curiosity. And those were the men Jesus built that church on. Why? Because he's looking for the curious. He's looking for the people who are fascinated with him, who are curious about him, in spite of the fact they have church figured out. Samuel, he served the Lord. Samuel, he was separated from the toxic 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 environment in the temple and the, toward the end I want to highlight one more thing what I read today is this is that Samuel minister to the Lord and I want to highlight you these two words before Eli before Eli is Samuel submitted to the authority that happened to be flawed with a bunch of mistakes and unfortunately really not good. This authority was so not good that even God sharply rebuked this authority. In fact Samuel's first visitation was not about his future but about the destruction of the future of his authority and he felt so bad for Eli that he couldn't sleep at night. He didn't go in he's like oh my gosh I can't tell Eli I can't wait to tell Eli God's gonna kill him. Yeah a prophetic word I was waiting. No Samuel felt bad for Eli because it's the man he honored. It's the man he respected. Yes, this man had a lot of flaws. This man had a lot of mistakes. But it's the man that Samuel had in his life who helped him to discover God. I want to share something about authority. One, the fear of God causes you to honor flawed authority, not just the perfect one. The fear of God causes you to honor authority that's not perfect. I'm carrying this verse in here. Thank you Connect Church by the way they sent me this. It says this, honor people, love thy brother, fear God and honor the king. I believe if you don't minister to God and you don't fear God, you will despise authority based on what you see in them. Dishonoring authority, despising authority in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 17 it says, these are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest and for them is reserved the darkness of black, blackness of darkness forever. Meaning he's speaking of people versus before, people who despise authority, people who make fun of authority. And he says these people become wells without water and the reason why I find people in my generation feel like they have a permission to dishonor authority is because they see flaws. Recently I was driving with, with a group of guys and the police officer is beside us and he said, pigs. I said, what are you talking about? And he pointed to the police officer. I said, did you know only criminals call police pigs? I said, you're a criminal. I said, the Bible doesn't call them pigs. It calls them servants of God. You just disrespected a servant of God. And the Bible says, 
they don't carry a sword in vain there is a bullet there for you bro I said have you noticed that people who honor the law respect the police and people who always break the law call them with names I said where in the Bible I understand the culture disrespects the authority but remember what I said we are not part of this culture we're a part of a different kingdom and in that kingdom Apostle Peter tells the church honor the king who killed people for sport these kings they brought people in the middle of their parties for sport do you remember King Herod he had a girl who did a salsa dance he said what do you want girl and she says I just want the head of John the Baptist you mean you want us to draw his head no I want us to cut his head off awesome no board meetings no uh, let us think about it uh, are you sure what did he do he sends a text message and next thing happens right in the middle of the party they bring the head chopped off from the head of a John the Baptist and this is the king Peter says honor how could you honor a man like that you don't honor him you honor the position that he occupies it breaks my heart to see our generation looks at our president and calls him moron and then they look at their parents and they call him stupid they look at pastors they call them con, con artists and false prophets they're pro they're pastors not prophets get it right they look at their, their their mom and they call them slow and they call them with all kinds of names next thing that happens you have to understand is that your flood authority doesn't give you right to dishonor them just because your parents are divorced it doesn't give you a right to break the curfew just because your dad is in front of Netflix all the time it doesn't give you a right to say you know what I'm not gonna listen to you why you're not a good example because your dishonor shows more about your character than the person you're dishonoring God treats dishonor seriously when Ham made fun of his father who was drunk God didn't punish Noah he punished Ham when Miriam made fun of her brother for hypocrisy because Moses said do not marry women from other cultures and then Moses goes and finds a, a Ethiopian chick and gets married to her well Miriam has a problem she's like Mo you know you said not to do this are you the only guy what is wrong with you and she rises against him and trust me she had the right and God comes to Miriam and he says yeah Moses really crossed the line this time he says Miriam how dare you and God gives her a little gift called leprosy and says if you don't repent you're gonna die out of this now I look at that and I'm like God did you approve of Moses did no 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 God will deal with Moses as God did with Eli God would deal with Noah as God did with Saul when David honored him. It is not in your place to begin to tell your parents and fix your parents. Dishonor never fixed anyone. It hurts the person who releases it. It doesn't hurt the person and it doesn't help the person who receives it. Because my friend, one day you will have your own children. One day you will have your own grandchildren. One day you will be a teacher in the classroom. One day you will be the mayor in the city. One day you will be a leader of a home group. One day you will be a pastor of the church. And you will realize things look different from this point. What looks like control is care. What looks like they're taking my phone away is protection. What looks like hypocrisy is something you just don't understand yet. Because things look different when you switch places. I want to challenge a generation here today. Honor authority even if they're flawed. Even if they're fake. Why? Because God will protect your heart. He will use that to change them. And God will deal with authority. Now, I do want to say, if you are in a relationship where the husband is physically abusing you, you do have to report. You have to call police you have to get somebody to come and help if you are in the if you are at home and your one of the relatives is taking sexual advantages you have to report honor is not performing to those things if you are in a company and there is dubious illegal things you have to report either to HR or somebody or walk away from it we're not talking about closing a blind eye to an immoral and a criminal activity what I am talking about is character flaws little control there and there things that we use as excuses to say I will never honor that man I will never honor that woman David honored Saul and Jesus honored his mom and dad he came to the temple and his mom and dad says son we're going back home 
and Jesus says excuse me I am Yahweh you know beginning and the end and everything in between that's who you're talking to I made you in your mother's womb <laughs> I know I came out of yours but I made you and Mary looked at him and said snap out son let's go back home and Jesus the Bible says humbled himself he had a world to save but he also had a mom to honor and then when he did his ministry and it got so crazy and big his mom and the rest of the family came and they said we're gonna take our son home because he's crazy he is out of his mind guess who created that story his mom and Jesus kindly rebuked her more continued to do his ministry yet when he was dying and his mom stood there because most likely historians say that Jesus's dad already passed away that's why you don't see any mention of Joseph but Mary Jesus who was the job of the older brother to take care of the housing of his parents arranging housing for his mom while paying for my salvation says John can you take her to your home mom can you go to John he's figuring out housing if Jesus did that for his mom how are you going to answer the call of God if you don't even answer the call of your parents if you don't honor your parents I don't care if they left you at five or six what they did was wrong your attitude is worse in the, in Ephesians it says this I'm going to read you this verse and we're going to bring this to, 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 to the end and I know this is where all the parents have lied go deeper go deeper please go deeper <laughs> praise God my child is in this room <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 it says the following children obey your parents in the Lord for it is right meaning you don't get brownie points you don't get any money for that it's because it's right meaning it's it's because you don't get kicked out of the house and then it says this honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment it's not the first commandment it's the fourth commandment but it says it's the first in fact it's the only commandment with a promise and I want you to see the promise what it says it says the promise it says that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth isn't that the reason why we go to college isn't that the reason why we try to eat broccoli and stay away from donuts live long and have a good well life well God says the key the key to your assignment is not in how great your parents are it's in how great your attitude is toward the parents you have the key is in your hands they are the door camera people I'm sorry the key the, your destiny what's behind this is your assignment little boy Samuel doesn't realize that behind this door is Samuel being a prophet not just a priest but a prophet behind this door is Samuel being an author do you remember two books of Samuel written by Samuel so behind that so here he is a little boy just serving in the temple but there is an author inside of him there is a prophet inside of him it's behind that door and the door is that authority is Eli it's a wooden door it's not a perfect door it has stains all over but it doesn't change the fact that if you got the key the wooden broken not so decorated and nice doors will open if you have the key and the key is your honor and the Bible says he served the Lord under Eli in fact he served under Eli so much that when flawed imperfect Eli he felt that Eli was calling him at night Samuel got up and says did you call me he says no I didn't call you son go back home go go back to sleep he goes in three times he answers that call and you may say you know Pastor Vlad if my authority my parents my coach my my boss and my manager they're so mean the Bible says in the New Testament that will honor your bosses even when they're mean but what can I learn from them the calling on my life is so much greater did you know that Samuel was not mentored by a prophet he was mentored by an old overweight flawed horrible priest who was a terrible father terrible father he unlocked in him a prophet you might say how can my parents I want to have a degree my parents never finished high school if you listen to your parents you'll have a degree because you will watch less TV and do what they say you say how can my pastor I'm called to be a businessman and my home group leader he's not a businessman but if but the things that they will teach you all Eli did is says when you go back to sleep and you hear the voice again this is what you say 
I'm not a prophet but I don't need to be a prophet to tell you how to activate the prophet and then Samuel activated a king never being a king he activated one king he activated another king please understand every boxer listens to a guy who's not boxing every football player is listening to a guy who's standing there screaming at him in sports they do that but in life many of us are so slow we're looking at them and say but I'm the one fighting I'm the one praying I'm the one going to school what are you gonna tell me to do what they're gonna tell you to do can save your life and Eli spoke something to Samuel it opened his door it opened something in his spirit he started to hear God and God used that many people come to me and they say pastor Vlad it is very shocking and surprising to see how you're under the covering of your uncle and I said what do you mean I said I don't see any other life than that they said well nobody a lot of people don't know him he didn't write a book he doesn't travel all around the world I said you don't understand that stuff doesn't matter all of those things my pastor doesn't have to be an author to activate an author what activates an author in me is not whether he's an author it's whether I have the honor in my heart for his grace upon his life he doesn't have to be all around the world preaching why because if God placed it in me I don't have to find a mentor who preaches around the world I need to find the mentor God placed in my life right now and some of you you have a mentor in your life it's your mom and it's your dad it's your spiritual leader it's your parents it's your spiritual elder and some of you you threw the key out and you're saying God I want a better door and God says this one will do your assignment is waiting on the other side of you changing your attitude toward the authority you already have you don't need to face big 20,000 people of all the people who have a million followers say can you be my mentor you got one across the room you got one in your apartment it's called your dad the one you're ignoring it's your mom who you're despising it's your pastor whose text messages you don't respond to it's your police officer who you keep calling pig oh because I don't like this and I don't like that God says your assignment is laying locked because the key is in your hands and it's called your attitude honor your father and your mother honor the king please guys you don't have to agree with our president I didn't agree with the uh, with with the previous president that we had because of him I had to pay a penalty of two thousand dollars every year for not having insurance but it didn't change the fact that he's my president I pray for him and I honor him I didn't agree with some of his policies you may not agree with some of the things that Donald Trump does he's your president and you're in, in this country you gotta honor the king that's what the Bible said you might not agree with some of the things that are happening in the police and everything but it's your job to drive according to speed limit and if they pull you over then your knees better be trembling and your voice better be stuttering with fear and reverence and if he gives you a ticket you better say no 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 you say sir I am so sorry that I broke the law please forgive me and I thank you for reinforcing it you pray for your pastors because if you gossip about your pastors in front of your kids I'm gonna tell you one thing don't be surprised if your kids don't want to go to church later on don't be surprised if your kids don't want to know God because you trash every church that you go to our church is perfect of course they're not your house is not perfect how do you expect this one to be we, we, we are an imperfect church because we have people in this room and as long as there's people there's gonna be flaws and that's where we learn like two other boys of Noah we cover the flaws we pray and we say God we want to work we want to have the elders the bishops to come in and help our leaders but criticizing gossiping backbiting backstabbing it destroys your future and it doesn't help the church it doesn't help your family and it doesn't help our community hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.